But then something interesting happened. That number has now like doubled, 218,000. Now we're asking ourselves, wait, who were those voters? Now, are those people who are probably citizens or those the illegal voters? We found a new set of approximately 120,000 Arizonans who may be affected by a data coding oversight with the Arizona voter registration databases. Oh no! But instead harass and intimidate voters in the midst of an election whose rights fund test has already vindicated before Arizona's highest courts. You see what's happened here? Whoa! What is going on in Arizona? We've got a big bucket of over 200,000 votes that we're trying to figure out what to do with. These voters are registered, but not proven to be citizens. There's a lot of complexity here, and we've got one party who's trying to get some answers. They are America First Legal, but they're filing a lawsuit now in the state of Arizona against Adrian Fontes, the Secretary of State, because we have questions about our problematic elections. Now, here is what the lawsuit says. They're trying to get access just to public records to know how many of these voters are going to be disenfranchised or what is going to be the outcome here. And the Secretary of State is being very squirrely with his answers. So the lawsuit begins, you know, it's against state and federal law for foreign citizens to register to vote. And state law requires that you actually prove you're a citizen. Now, 60% of Arizonans, and I'm sure it's higher than this, and probably the statistic is not limited to Arizona, are concerned that cheating will affect the outcome of the election, 60%. In a statistically valid survey of Arizona of August, 1.9% of likely voters said that they are not U.S. citizens. See, that's that. An additional 1.18% responded they're not sure if they're citizens. Therefore, collectively, just over 3% of likely Arizona voters in the survey disclaimed citizenship. It's not good. Now, many recent electoral races in Arizona have been decided by margins less than 1%. For example, a recent national survey of likely voters found that 52% believe that election officials are either doing nothing to prevent foreign citizens from voting or they're not doing enough. Only 26% believe that election officials have effective plans to deal with foreigners voting. Another survey said that 55% of likely U.S. voters believe it is likely that non-citizens are illegally registered to vote in the state where they live. 32% say it's very likely. Numbers are high. And so this lawsuit is seeking to restore public trust in the state system. With public confidence in elections so low, the need for transparency has never been higher. Arizona's public records law is designed especially for times like this so we can see what's happening. And there's a strong presumption in favor of showing us these materials. Now, the government here has admitted to gross failures in their duties. These failures in Arizona allowed over 218,000 individuals to register to vote without providing documentary proof of citizenship as required by law. And we've covered this for a while. Remember, the number was about half that, about 98,000 people. And those people, turns out, were mostly Republicans. They'd been on the rolls for a very long time. And it seemed very interesting that Stephen Richer, the gentleman who lost his race and is not going to be in office anymore, is now suddenly concerned about those voters. And the result, if he would have gotten his way, which at this point he has not, would have been to make those voters only get federal ballots so that they would not be participating in local state races races, which we've got propositions and other things. In other words, Republicans, theoretically, would lose about 100,000 people from the state races, which would be great for the other side. But then something interesting happened. That number has now like double, 218,000. Now we're asking ourselves, wait, who were those voters? Now, are those people who are probably citizens or those the illegal voters? We're asking ourselves, how is this all coming about? And why do we keep discovering new buckets of people that don't have citizenship? Now, the plaintiffs filed a valid, the lawsuit here, record request to seek a list of these people. Who is on this list? Alarmingly, rather than fulfilling their statutory duty and fulfilling the request promptly, Arizona government officials are stonewalling and they've unlawfully refused to fill it. They're insulating themselves from their embarrassment. Apparently that's more important than them following the law. Now, the government and their denial of our reasonable and targeted public requests is backwards. They bear the burden of showing why they shouldn't give us these materials. And so we have been wrongfully denied our records and we're demanding recourse. They tell us Adrian Fontes, the secretary, administers Arizona's elections. On September 6, Richer identified a flaw in the Arizona system that allowed tens of thousands of individuals to register to vote even though they didn't have proof of citizenship on file. Now more specifically, Fontes and the governor's office, Katie Hobbs, and Arizona DOT, they all just
just got together, they're like, oh no, let's get our heads together and see if we can figure this out. We've identified a flaw in Arizona's DOT, Department of Transportation licensing process. And that caused voter registrations received after January 24th from individuals who got a driver's license before this, right? So very detailed lists here, but received a duplicate copy to inaccurately to be understood as having provided proof of citizenship, right? So the list just got wonky. Now, as of September 18th, Fontes claimed to have identified 98,000 voters, right? We knew who these people were. And you think about this, right? Just think about who these people are. So they got a driver's license in Arizona before 1996. Most of our illegal immigration problem has been in the last decade, let's say. So this is people who've probably been here for a long time. And then they got a duplicate copy of their license and their registration was after the fact. So it's probably people who've been in Arizona for a long time, made up the 97,000 and who may have been erroneously marked as not having provided citizenship, right? So the Republican party came out like, these are our voters, like two thirds are Republicans. So we definitely want them to be counted in the state races. But then all of a sudden we found a bunch of new flaws. This flaw was revealed to the public when Richer filed an emergency petition with Arizona because he wanted them to only become federal only voters, meaning they could not participate in state and local races at all. Then all of a sudden we have 98,000 people who are on that list and the Republicans came out and they're like, we keep them on the ballot, right? Give them ballots, keep them on the list. Then all of a sudden what happened is on September 30th, the secretary Adrian came out. He's like, you're not going to believe this. Guess what? We found a new set of approximately 120,000 Arizonans who may be affected by a data coding oversight with the Arizona voter registration databases. Oh no, another 120,000 voters. Now within hours of Richer filing his emergency petition on the 17th, seeking to disenfranchise 98,000 voters, they submitted a public records request saying, hey, we want to know who you identified. Now they then noted that the records were sought because this information is directly related to another lawsuit about failures to submit lists to confirm immigration status, right? So more lawsuits are happening. And they also noted that we need these because there's pending litigation. This organization also sent a letter to Adrian Fontes and his attorney. So they're just documenting their communication. Say this, okay, we filed a record request. We noted in our email this. Then we sent that letter to Fontes via email to his lawyer. Then we submitted a request through the records portal. Then we forwarded a copy to Fontes's public records custodian. Then at 256, they contacted us through the portal and they requested. Then at 259, we did this. And then on September 24th, then they responded to our request, our public records request, and they refused it, claiming that the records requested will be made available for inspection at the soonest time possible, but no access will occur before the 2024 election. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're not going to give us any details about your newly discovered lists? So the denial letter offered no valid justification under Arizona law for this response. Wait a minute, you're not going to give us the records? The law says we are entitled to it. Rather, they based the denial on their unfounded assumptions about the ulterior motives of us. They said, we fear that your true desire for these records is not to keep watch on government actions, which are public records. What the hell is this? But instead harass and intimidate voters in the midst of an election whose rights Fontest has already vindicated before Arizona's highest courts. Do you see what's happened here? Whoa. Okay, I think I can see what's happened. This is totally speculation, but if I had to fill in the gaps, they set the Republican party up, okay? The first 98,000 people, that was only half the list. They have a good list and a bad list. So they came out with a good list and they said, oh no, what do you Republicans want to do about this? Should we keep them on the list or kick them off? Republicans came out and said, keep them on, keep them on. And they said, oh great. So your position is you want to keep people on the list. Well, now that we know that, let's show you another 120,000 people that we've just discovered. That's the bad list. That's their side, right? So then they get that list now and they say, well, it's uh, they're going to be on the ballot. However, no reasonable person would have a good faith basis for drawing any such inferences from our filings. So they're just denying it. It's your bad faith. We can't show you this list because it's ulterior motive. However, no reasonable person would have a good faith basis. Now, accordingly, the basis for the denial was made in bad faith. They claimed that privacy and security can overcome the presumption of public records of access. They failed to cite any privacy or security exception at all. Now, their privacy claim is nonsensical because on or about August 7th, they already produced the entire voter registration database to us. So we already have it all. We just need to know who's on the list. In fact, they've already produced the entire database because they have a statutory obligation to produce this upon request. Now we just want a subset of the database, but they claim that denial of the 
the record request was in our best interest because the information is also imperfect or unreliable, and that producing such information would harm the public by causing confusion or insecurity or harm, and it would cause administrative chaos. They're not going to give us the records because it's bad for them to do that. However, there is no exception for imperfect or unreliable information. If the state is maintaining imperfect or unreliable information, that's exactly why we need to see it. This is a gross failure and violation of public trust, and their denial letter failed to articulate any specific harm as to why we cannot have these materials. In essence, the state's best interests that they invoke here would be embarrassment to them and expose them to public criticism for their failures. Indeed, bringing transparency to this is exactly why we have public records laws in the first place. And yeah, it might be an administrative burden for you, but that's the point. Your own words betray you there, Adrian Fontes. The denial letter acknowledges that you have already complied with the information we requested. We just need to know what list it is. Indeed, it's obvious they've compiled all the necessary information. Otherwise, they would not have been able to publicly announce the number of voters affected. So there is no burden at all. They've already compiled this stuff. They don't have to go and do a bunch of work. Just give it to us. Even if there were merits to their excuses, the public interest in this transparency is much broader. And so contrary to their claims, they need to give us these materials. They are hiding the documents because they do not want us to see this. Signed by James K. Rogers, America First Legal Foundation. And we're watching something very strange happening here. They gave us the first list. We were able to identify that the first half of the list, the 98,000, were Republicans. Then they dropped another 120,000 in there. And they don't want to tell us who's on that list. Isn't that convenient?